quote from the book on value chain reconfiguration. This method analyzes existing value chains, breaks them down into their component parts and then recombines them in a new configuration. The aim is to acquire or maintain maximum control of key stages and processes, thus internalizing core competences as a competitive advantage. In my two favorite industries, automotive and high-tech, a lot of things are in flux. At a high level, one could observe a trend towards vertical integration. Looking a bit closer though, one can observe a compelling evidence for value chain reconfiguration. In this video, I will explain the idea behind chessboard method E8 with a couple of examples. Let's get started. Apple switching the chips for Macs from Intel to the M-series Apple Silicon is value chain reconfiguration. This is not just insourcing, nor is it a simple su supplier switch. Before, Intel as an IDM provided design, front-end and back-end services. Today, Apple is doing the design internally. The front-end is provided by DSMC and the back-end is provided by OSATS and other suppliers selected by Apple. And had the switch happened a couple of years earlier, DSMC may well have provided the front-end services to Intel. So the foundry would have stayed in place, but everything else would be moving around. For Apple, the switch is not really motivated by cost. Okay, they won't have to pay Intel's profit margin, but building up their own design competences comes at considerable cost and risk. The key reason why they are doing this is because they are going for profitable growth. They expect that with their own M-series chips, they will get superior performance by what? and that tightly integrating their software with hardware, they will be able to provide a superior user experience. This is what motivates the value chain reconfiguration. Car makers should study Apple's example carefully. The switch to electric powertrain poses great opportunities to look at their own supply chains. Most of them have in-house production of combustion engines and the associated drivetrains and many of them have some in-house component manufacturing. There are many critical questions to be asked and answered. One of these questions is how to manage the sunset of the combustion engine. Is this something we want to remain involved in or should we hand all of it over to specialists now? Or something in between. This will have great impact on the availability of key resources today and on supply security and enterprise value tomorrow. Another one of these key questions is how to deal with batteries. Is this something that is purely dictated by securing supply? Is outsourcing most or all of it to suppliers the right way to approach this? Are there key technologies that we need to bring in-house? Why is Tesla so deeply involved in batteries? And how can we reduce the overall carbon footprint of batteries in order to be credible? The current rush to get new EV models out of the factory gates together with the semiconductor crisis are consuming a lot of available management capacity in the automotive industry. And there's a certain risk that there's not sufficient time to really explore these questions in depth. But as Apple has shown, it is never too late to start doing this. So there you have it, E8 value chain reconfiguration, a purchasing method that requires you to ask hard questions, but promises big rewards. Okay, now it is your turn. Have you experimented with value chain reconfiguration? And do you feel that in your company procurement has the mandate to ask hard questions? Let all of us know in the comments down below. And should you have a question, I will get back to you within 24 hours. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next one. Bye.